Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. This is Play It Forward. Real people, real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 638 is with racial justice educator and author Christine Saxman. Good morning. This is Christine. Christine, listen to that beautiful voice. Oh, my goodness (laughs) sakes. Thank you. It's a a little congested. I unfortunately have COVID. (laughs) Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. (laughs) Thank you. You got to talk to me about this book because you come with so much cred. You've got so much experience. And you know what? Those of us on the outside here, we've got assumption. You know what I mean? We, we just sit here and we, we think we've got this, but we don't have what you've got. Well, thank you so much. To gain the confidence to put a book out there inside stores, it's going to create conversations. How do you, how do you maneuver your way through this? Because people are going to look at this cover and they're going to judge it immediately, which is rule number one. Don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> well, honestly, we wanted to help people feel comfortable um, actually talking about it. So we did we did kind of want to push the conversation a little bit with our cover and with our title, um, Being White Today. Um, actually, we wanted to push it a little bit further. We originally wanted it to, to be, it's okay to be white, um, picking up on the, the white nationalist flyers that prompted the book. Um, and uh, that was going a little too far. <laughs> it was making <laughs> making folks a little too uncomfortable. Um, but we really wanted to not have white nationalists be the ones to own the conversation of what it means to be white. We wanted anti-racist folks and, and folks who care about fighting racism to, to help other white folks who feel uncomfortable to get to get the skills and realize it's not as scary as it might seem. And it's not just white nationalists who are the ones who talk about being white. You know, one of the things that you cover inside this book, and I mean, it's, it's a door opener. Why bother to help if they hate you anyway? Let's, let's talk about that. Why, why bother to help? I mean, we see this every day. Well, and that's one of the things that that's one of those messages that I think the white, the far right and the white nationalists manipulate really well, which is, is this idea that it's all divisive and, you know, it's, it's hard to cross racial boundaries. And so you might as well not bother. And, and that's, that's buying into either or thinking. And that's one of the messages in the book that we really push is let's not fall for that. It really is both and, and, and we can, we can really understand ways to, to work towards it's a healthy multiracial democracy. And we have lots of models for it already. Um, we just don't talk about them enough. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we're trying to uplift in the book. Do you think that's the reason why social media and journalists will, will kind of push that envelope? They, it's like they're trying to hide behind something or is it they're pushing too much on it and we, we get our own beliefs? Well, I think in a lot of ways, that's the easier story. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 the... It's the one that activates us more, so it's easy to feel kind of a, a righteousness around um, the divide, and it's hard to talk about nuance. And so that's part of what we're trying to do is ask people to slow down. And, and social media isn't a slow down place. <laughs> social media is a, is, a, is a click and engage, a click and engage, a click and engage. And, and we're asking folks to let's slow down and, and, and have – have more of a nuanced and a over a cup of coffee kind of conversation. The, the scenarios that you put inside this book, did you go camp out at a Starbucks and just sit there and watch life? And it's like, oh, we're writing about that. Oh, my God. Here's another story. Here's another story. I mean, it's all around us. Yes. So a lot of it comes from our own interactions um, in our you know 20 plus years in doing this work as white folks. A lot of it comes from stories that people have shared with us. So even though they're fictionalized in the book, they all are based on either real stories that Shelley and I have experienced ourselves or that um, people have shared with us. So we really wanted them to be practical experiences so that they felt real, that there are things that that white people are struggling with so that uh, when they read it, people can see themselves and be like, oh, yes, I deal with this in my church. I deal with this in my school. I deal with this in my neighborhood. You were talking about Nash, white nationalists. And one of the things that you bring up in one of the messages is that anti-racism is anti-white. Yes. And that's a message that they've been pushing really, really well. And, you know, it's kind of building on this, this, the same piece of, you know, the way that the strategy they came with anti-critical race theory, um, anti-DEI, that's all tied into, um, you know, anti-racism is anti-white. 
And they've been really effective with it. That's why there's been legislation um, in certain states. And um, we really want to push back against that and think about the ways in which this isn't anti-white. Um, this isn't anti-white people. Um, in fact, um, doing anti-racism is a way for us to be healthier <laughs> hence the title of the book we can have a positive identity as white people when we really work cross-racially because we're actually working to make society better as a whole you know one of the things that i always try to share with people if you want to see different points of view and learn what other people are thinking and doing in their lives go get a job at a grocery store and get involved with your community at that level because everybody has to go to the watering hole that's right. And that's one of the things that we offer is really trying to, to, to engage differently and engage in ways with folks that um, really help you build different skill muscles. We yes. talk about uh, different skills, like emotional skills, conversational skills. There's all different kinds of skills that we can build uh, to, to really just be better um, in our cross-racial relationships. So when it comes to disarming tactics, what does that actually require? Because I, I'm a person that likes activation. I'll sit here and use a yellow highlighter all the way through this book. But if it's just going to sit there, then, then I didn't do it right. I need to activate the word. Yes. And so um, activation can, can take place in lots of different ways. And so when we, when we talk about... Um, uh, working uh, with, you know, say it's white person to white person and, and you're trying to understand someone who is just like, I don't want to talk about race. I don't want to do this. Yeah. You know, engaging them is just to understand, first of all, okay, so why? Rather than arguing with them, you know, well, you should care about race and, you know, giving them a, a laundry list of ideas, just pause and be curious. So that's, that's an activation right there is learning questioning skills and learning listening skills to just sit and be with that person and understand their perspective because once you understand their perspective then you can connect so listen connect and then you can pivot to sharing some reasons about why you have the beliefs that you have one of the things that we all should work on is stop stereotyping because just because they they may be african-american doesn't mean they like hip-hop music and jazz there I, I tell you what that's an eye-opener as a mobile dj when it's like you want to hear dave matthews that's awesome that's really awesome see i just learned something by going through that experience that's absolutely right we should always start from the position of curiosity rather than making assumptions yes yeah. what did you learn by doing this because you bared your soul inside this book that means that you had to take you your experiences put it on a page and now your body's going okay give me more Yes, I think that the greatest piece of this has just been how open people have been um, of all different racial and ethnic identities to um, using the tools and working within their communities to really build relationships. And that has been our goal all along is to really think about how do we build relationships to work towards the place that we don't, we're not there yet. And we have the hope that we'll, we'll be in a society that doesn't have racism anymore. And, and it's been worth putting our, you know, not always, you know, not our always best selves um, out there, but that's the point of, we're gonna make mistakes along the road. And Shelly and I have both have made mistakes during this process um, and we can recover from them. Um, that's skill building. Is it okay to, to, to think beyond black and white here? Because, because I do work at that grocery store and I know who's going to come into my, into my store after 9 p.m. at night. Some of the most hardworking people on this planet. And of course, I'm talking about immigrants and people who, who are legally Americans. But I learned from this book because I want to build that conversation. I want to build that connection with them and I want to learn how it is they're so dedicated and loyal. Absolutely. And I think that's a really important um, uh, conversation to talk about, too, because it's often framed, again, as an either or. Like when we're talking about race, it's either white people or black people. And we're talking about um, Asian Americans. We're talking about yes. Mexican Americans. We're talking about lots of different um, immigrant folks from the Middle East. Um, you know, so we're we really need to think about how we're talking about race and ethnicity and really thinking about what does multiracial mean and that we're really building bridges in lots of different directions um, and and really widening our view in that way as well. Isn't it kind of weird, though, as we were growing up, multiracial, it, it was one of those things I'd, I'd look at my mom and I'd say, so what, what do I have in me? Well, you're Norwegian. You've got some Native American in you. I mean, it was we all had a piece of something in each and, one, in, in each and every one of us. Why is it, it was not an issue back then, but it's an issue today? 
Well, I think sometimes it, it was an issue back then, but maybe we just didn't see it and talk okay. about it. Okay. And, you know, and that's part of going back and thinking about maybe what we weren't able to see. You know, I think about in my own, in my own story, um, when I lived in, in Baltimore, there were lots of racial issues there. And yet um, my, my parents taught me to be colorblind and I didn't see it at the time. Um, but now when I go back and look, there was lots there to see. I just wasn't able to see it. Wow. Where can people go to find out more information about you, Christine? And I want them to really dig in and see that this is not a book of negativity. This is a book of learning and, and a better understanding of how we can grow forward as, as a unity Yes, it is very much about having a positive anti-racist life. So thank you for uplifting that. And please visit beingwhitetoday.com to learn more about the book. And please pick up the book wherever you buy um, either paperbacks um, or uh, audiobooks. We would love to uh, engage with you. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. This platform is always going to be open for you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you get better, okay? (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) 